Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hi, my name is Art Bergeron and I'm an elder law attorney at a firm called, named Myrick O'Connell. And this show is called Bergeron Briefs. The purpose of the show is to introduce you to the programs and resources that are available to elders in your community and to introduce you to the people who are really involved in running those programs uh, and in providing those resources. And I am fortunate today to have with me the person who probably runs the agency that runs the most programs. Uh, Christine Alessandro uh, is joining us. She's the executive director of Baypath Elder Services, which you may or may not heard, have heard of, but if you are over 60 years old and you haven't, you should know about this. So Christine, first of all, just tell me about um, Baypath Elder Services. What in the world is that? Tell me how you got there, and then we can talk a little bit about programs. Well, first, Art, I'd like to say thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon and talking with you, as always. And Bay Path Elder Services covers 14 communities in Metro West. We mm -hmm. go from Hudson and Marlboro in the north down to Holliston in the south, and then from Westboro and Northboro over to Natick. So 14 of those communities, including the city of Marlboro. We and you, cover all and you those. come all the way up here to Wayland? Yes, we and, do. And down and as far Sudbury. as Do Dover and Sherburn. So you cover yes. a lot of places. Yes, we do. You cover a lot of places. 14 towns. I see. So Bay Path is what's called an aging services access point, and it's also an area agency on aging. And what are the in the world of those two things? An aging services access point mm -hmm. is a state definition. It's yeah. a state regulation that we have been written into, mm -hmm. and it says that aging services access points will provide information and referral, clinical screenings for Medicaid eligibility for uh, clinical programs yep. such as nursing homes, yep. and also protective services, and also in-home services for elders. And those are all funded through state dollars. That's then, a huge variety of programs. So, that, so that's an aging services access point, or an ASAP. Right. An ASAP. And what is the other term, aging? Area Agency on Aging. Area Agency on Aging, and what is that? That's also, that's called a AAA. A AAA. Not the car brand, right. but the Area Agency on Aging, which is funded by federal dollars, mm -hmm. and this was created through the Older Americans Act way back when President back Johnson. Back when we were young, back that's a right. long when time we ago. Were, yes. President Johnson. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And we were saying to ourselves, why are they spending all that money on old people? Right, right. and right. we have finally and, gotten and here. here we are. Yeah. Yes. And the money we get from the air, for the Area Agency on Aging funds primarily Meals on Wheels, the Caregiver Program, Ombudsman Program, which are volunteers that go into a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And also we send a lot of money back out into the community, such as for legal services. Mm -hmm. We have a very big grant to Metro West Legal Services every year. We do funding to the Councils on Aging for health programs, we do funding for transportation programs. So a lot, the bulk of it goes back out into the community. So many of these councils on aging, are they actually applying to you for funds during yes, the year? Yes, they do. And they're, they're looking to you to, in, in order to support many of the programs that they have. Yes, and most often they're evidence-based healthy living programs, mm -hmm. such as powerful tools or um, particular types of exercise programs that may be evidence-based. Such as powerful tools. Is this powerful tools for caregivers? Yes. I've heard this term. Yes. And so let's, so let, t tell me, tell us about that program and then I want to step back and talk, to, talk about you for a second. Sure. Powerful tools for caregivers is an evidence-based program, which mm -hmm. means that it has shown benefits, statistically showing benefits, 
and the program is designed for caregivers to help them in their journey of caregiving. Mm -hmm. And it teaches caregivers how to relieve stress, recognize signs and symptoms of stress, and how to deal better with their caregiving tasks and the care recipient. So they don't drop dead. Yes. So that the caregiver doesn't drop dead. I always tell my clients, so, so I have so many clients who are um, older and ha either they are, they are kind of youngish older and they're taking care of parents or they're kind of older, older and they're taking care of their spouse. And I keep telling them, I said, you know, the worst thing you can do for your spouse, especially if your spouse has got early stages of dementia or has serious physical problems, whatever, the worst thing you can do is drop dead. Because if you drop dead, your spouse right. has got real problems. So and the it, notion of having programs to it, actually help caregivers is terrific. And it uh, often does happen that the, uh, the spouse who is the caregiver does become ill and is unable to provide that care. So it is very, very important that folks learn to take care of themselves because yeah. it can be a a, a very emotional, um, agonizing time for them. And now I want to go back to those programs, but now I just want to go back to you for a second. So how did you end up doing this? Are, are you, have you been doing stuff involving elders all your life? Did you do, what, what did you do? How did you get here? I have been working with older adults all of my life. Yeah. I started out in New York City as a music therapist, mm -hmm. my undergraduate degree in music therapy, and I worked in nursing homes. And mm -hmm. I worked in New York City in nursing homes for 20 years, doing recreation or therapeutic activities. Yep. And I moved to Massachusetts in 1998. And at that time, I decided that I wanted to get out of long-term care. And I would rather work with community-based elders, you know, flip the coin, so yep. to speak. And I got a job at Baypath, not as executive director. But I got a job at Baypath and was exposed to folks and individuals living in the community and the problems and issues and concerns they had and their desire to stay in the community in their own homes. And I've really enjoyed my, my 16 year journey with the agency. That's a long time. That's a whole it long is. time. So, you, so you're, the agency deals then with pretty much elders from across the spectrum of age and even and of needs. So when you're thinking of elders, how young do you think of them as being? How, do you think of an elder as being someone who is like 60 or older or 55 or older or 65? Or is there really kind of a line as far as many of these programs are concerned? Well, as far as the agency is concerned, mm -hmm. we consider an older adult anyone 60 or above. Mm -hmm. That would be an elder. We do work with younger folks, uh, it, primarily individuals with disabilities. Mm -hmm. But there are also individuals who have an early onset of Alzheimer's. So those folks may be eligible for some of our programs as well. For federal purposes, it's 60 and above. For state purposes, it's 60 and above in terms of eligibility for some programs. I see. But best to contact us to find out what you might be eligible for to meet your needs. And that's one of the things that I try to emphasize to, to seniors is to just talk to you folks, just mm -hmm. to get a sense that, 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 that while you can, they, you're certainly willing to take their call when there's an emergency, mm -hmm. The best time to talk to them is when they're just trying to understand the things that you do. Right. So can you just talk to us about that a little bit? So for folks, so if, if someone's just at that age, those, they're 60 to 65, they're probably retiring or thinking about retiring, and they want to get a sense of whether there are programs they should be involved in or benefits that they may be eligible for, kind of their tax dollars at work now that they've, kind of, now that they've gotten older. Can you just talk about what some of those programs might be? Sure. And one, of the, one, of, um, right. one thing one of my colleagues always says is, mm -hmm. know us before you need us. That's her yes. tagline. And while you may, turn, may, while you may be 60 or 62 yeah. or 68, you might think, I, I don't need elder services. I'm not at that age yet. But we have something for everyone. You may be 65 and caring for your 95-year-old mother. You may be 62 and interested in ways to learn to manage your diabetes better or your chronic health conditions. Mm -hmm. You may wish to find out about some other type of employment. You may wish to have volunteer, volunteer for your community. We have volunteer opportunities. So it doesn't all mean- All within Baypath. All within Baypath, exactly. And we're always looking for board members too. People who <laughs> are interested in yeah. 
in the needs of older adults. And you must have board members from all across these, these 14 communities that you serve. Yes, we do. We have a seat for representative directors from each of our councils on aging, mm -hmm. and, then we, and then we have other individuals who are just interested in older adults at large. Now, I know that well, oftentimes folks at, at, uh, at uh, councils on aging will always talk about their programs as being beyond bingo. Mm -hmm. And when I think about the, elder, the, the, the ASAPs, I think of it as being beyond Meals on Wheels. But right. among other things, you're the Meals on Wheels folks, right? Yes, we are. And in addition to that, once again, if I were an older person, I was living at home, what kinds of things might I, might I be thinking about that might be a program that you would, you would be involved in or a benefit that, th uh, that through you I may be able to find a benefit that I wouldn't have been aware of? I think our healthy living programs are one example. And, give it, and talk to us about that. The healthy living uh, programs help you, again, evidence-based programs. Yeah. So they help you identify with, um, help you identify and live with chronic conditions. They help, that we have a, um, an evidence-based program for healthy eating, mm -hmm. where the end benefit is you all get to go out to dinner and enjoy a healthy meal. So there's always something for everyone. And it's just a matter of going onto our website, www.baypath.org, or calling us up and having a conversation with one of us. www.baypath.org. And, yes. and, and we'll try to make sure that that's a, a banner mm -hmm. when the show gets, gets uh, repeated. Now, for folks who are mm -hmm. slowing down and are, once again, they're at home and they really want to stay at home. I always talk about the fact that my, my typical the people I always use as examples are my couple, Frank and Mary, my make-believe couple, and their goal uh, is to die and be buried in the backyard. So they never want to leave their house. If, so if I've got those folks, and I always talk to them, I say, you know, that's a great objective, and you can do that as long as you're safe at home. Mm -hmm. And the key is to try to make that home safe, and maybe to get some assistance so that you can be staying at home. Mm -hmm. If folks needed some assistance at home because they were slowing down, can you talk about programs that might be available for them? Yes. Um, and folks are often very hesitant to call because people want to be independent. They don't want to go into a nursing home. They oh, may, God, no. They, the they last may, alternative. They may feel like a failure because they're asking for some assistance. And mm -hmm. that's not true. Exactly the opposite is true. We want to help you stay in your home. So you may need some services like a little bit of homemaking. Maybe you need some transportation because you can't get to and from your medical appointments. Perhaps you may need some grocery shopping or some laundry services. Mm -hmm. And these things can, can help you stay safely at home and, and give, continue to give you that independence. Mm -hmm. And you do all of that? You provide all of that? We don't provide it. We contract out with vendor agencies that are fully vetted. Yeah. We vet them, and they're in the community, so we contract out with them to provide these services in the home. So, and you have funding to provide them. This is, this yes. is, this is I always talk, talk to people about, this is your tax dollars at work. Yeah. There is money, and a lot of this is state money, if I, if I recall correct. correctly. That is correct, yes. So, do folks, oftentimes when they're thinking about qualifying for benefits, and I know it's because they tend to be thinking in the mass health mindset, and they think to themselves, ooh, I have to be broke. I have to have less than $2,000 in assets. Do these programs that you're now talking about, do they have um, asset requirements that you have to be poor in order to qualify for them? Well, for the state-funded home care requirements, mm -hmm. for the income eligibility, we do not look at assets at all. We only look at your annual income. So it's which purely income. Annual income, which for a single individual is about $26,000 per year, mm -hmm. which in, in, in itself is not high. But there, for folks who do have a higher income mm -hmm. than that, we do have the ability to work with our vendors perhaps to provide you some case management services so that you can have those services in the home with, with some support. I see. I see. So, so you, shouldn't be try, you shouldn't be automatically excluding yourself. Correct. Right. And, but rather, you should be, somebody should be calling Bay Path and saying, so let's... Talk, let's talk about what kinds of programs that I may be eligible for. Exactly. And that's the way to do it. Don't think you're ineligible. Call us and talk to us about what your needs are mm -hmm. and let us take it from there. We'll work with you. And now what about if I'm a, once again, if I'm a caregiver, if I'm dealing with that elder or I'm dealing with my spouse or my brother or my sister or whatever, 
Can you just talk about what kind, you, you talked about a program at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how that works? What's, what's a, how are you gonna help me deal with those issues? Well, oftentimes with a caregiver, besides perhaps having some in-home services, yeah. they have a need for respite. Mm -hmm. You wanna go to your daughter's wedding and I have to have somebody care for my husband. We can provide that respite for you so you can get away. I see. Our caregiver specialist can work with you in the home to identify other resources that you may be eligible for or that may meet your needs. They can provide some training for you as well. And we have a specialized website for caregivers, mm -hmm. and that is www.caregivingmetrowest.org. www. <laughs> dot caregiving metro west one word caregiving metro west dot org you've even got one of your brochures i've got one of my brochures right here <laughs> and caregiving metro west dot org yep. which is funded in large part by the metro west health foundation serves 25 communities in metro west the same 25 communities of the foundation and and, on and, this, and that includes all of your 14 communities all right? every single plus, one of them some. yes yep. so there are resources there's a blog there there's a, a wealth of information to help you in the caregiving journey. It's just a terrific website. I know you got special funding in order to generate the website itself, right? There was like, yes. if I recall, several hundred thousand dollars just to develop the website. Right. right. There's a long planning process and then the whole website development and implementation in itself. And what I really like about it is you can go on that website because f folks don't live in a region. Folks live in a town or in a city. And what's great about the website is you can go on that website for any of those communities and just click to that community mm -hmm. and look for resources that are available right in your community. So it's not, yes. you're not just, you know, stuck with this kind of very general. Right. Because once again, as I get older, I get, like, I don't really want to travel a whole lot. I would just as soon not travel mm -hmm. a whole lot. Now, can you just talk briefly about what Bay Path does regarding folks that are stuck having to consider nursing home care? Can you just talk about that? Certainly. We have um, an options counseling program mm -hmm. for individuals who may be considering a nursing home or want to know what their options are. Mm -hmm. So an options counselor can meet with you, whether it be in hospital, your home, a rehab center, yep. and go over with you the resources that may be available, that are available to you, that may not be a nursing home. For example, in the state home care program, we have a program called Choices mm -hmm. that pr can provide up to 24-7 care. And this is for individuals on Medicaid who are eligible for nursing homes, but you get to remain in your own home. That's 24, up to 24-7 care at home. At home. Once yes. again, people are always astonished to hear right. this. That and this that has possible. to be approved by a nurse. It's, right. a clinical, it's clinical eligibility, but the point being it's more than two hours a day. Right. And oftentimes, there, most of the time, there is a caregiver involved as well but that means you can stay at home. So we put a package together for you. And we, we know it's not easy, so we're there to support you, we're there to support your caregiver to put this together to help you meet your needs. Because your goal, as, the, as is the state's mm. goal, for people who have dementia, for people who otherwise might need nursing home care if the support weren't there, right. your goal is to keep folks home. That is And true. the Mass Health yes. goal is to keep folks home. Right. People don't realize once, once you've, you've become uh, el medically eligible for nursing home care, everybody is interested in making sure that that never happens <laughs> and right. kind of you most of all. Right. So where are you? Where, is, are you? where are you physically located? Where's the agency? We are physically located in Marlboro, yeah. right on Route 20, yeah. but folks don't have to come to our office. We yeah. go out to you in the field. Our nurses, our case managers, our options counselors, caregiver specialists, they all go out into the field to see people. So you don't have to come in. You just have to call us and call for information and referral and do an intake or just talk to us about what you need. And if you're, if you're proposing home care services for these folks, mm -hmm. you're the folks who are buying the home care services, right? So, so yes. that if I'm an elder, one of my biggest concerns is people coming into my home can I trust them? Are they going to steal? Are they, are, are there, are there are legitimate kind of concerns. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But you're actually, you're the person who actually hires the home care agencies that actually provide that care. Right? We, we contract with the provider agencies. Yeah. The provider agencies must be approved by the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. So there is a very strict vetting process. 
we do monitoring, we do observation, we go out into the field to meet with the provider agencies. So there is a lot of oversight. Because you, when you go onto the, any website and you look for an agency, how do you know if one is better than another? Right. There's a lot of research involved. And I was, several years ago, my mother had a very bad fall. She lives in another state, yep. and I had to run down to take care of her. And I was put in the position of going through the yellow pages to try and find folks to help her. Right. So it's better to know where to go to before that emergency occurs. But all of these agencies we've been working with for many, many years. So I guess the, the, the to summarize, if I'm 60 or older, I ought to know who Bay Path Elder Services is, and I ought to call you to see if there are things that you can be doing for me, right, before there's an emergency. Absolutely. Is that, is that fair? Or yeah. things that you might be able to do for us. Right. You want to volunteer for money management or be a Meals on Wheels driver? We have a lot of volunteer drivers for that program. So, so. you're kind of the focal, the focal point through which all of these other things happen. Exactly. And it just so happens. <laughs> So that's the brochure. Uh, we're gonna we'll, and, and and we're gonna have the information from this the the from Bay Path on the on on this show so that you'll be able to follow it. And can you give us a phone number also? What is the number that they could call if they wanted to call? The Bay Path phone number is yeah. 508-573-7200. Yeah. 508-573-7200. That's correct. Now I know that we'll have you again on this show so that we can be talking about more specific programs. The point of this was to give folks this overview. Thank you so much. Thank you all for watching Bridgeron Briefs and we'll look forward to seeing you uh, in another episode of this show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.